watching some kids having fun with a miniature surfboard called a G Whopper. The G Whopper was invented by one of these three young ladies. What is your name, please? My name is Gail Mansfield. My name is Gail Mansfield. My name is Gail Mansfield. Only one of these young ladies is the real Gail Mansfield. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bob Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Good, Good evening, evening. Bye. 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 That's what I like to hear. <laughs> We're brought to you this evening by Winston Filter Cigarettes. And now, panel, if you will uh, open up that envelope, follow along as I read, I'll read my copy. I, Gail Mansfield, am president and chairman of the board of Ruthard Incorporated, developers and manufacturers of a miniature surfboard called the G-Whopper. The G-Whopper is my own invention. It can skim a child or an adult across receding waves, ponds, puddles, or even wet grass. I got the idea while watching some children play in the surf with a barrel top. That was nine months ago. Today, my company makes about 50,000 G Whoppers a month. In order to assume the duties of chairman of the board of my own company, I had to get special permission from the court, since I am not yet 21 years old. Signed, Gail Mansfield. <laughs> Now, panel, these uh, young ladies all claim to be Gail Mansfield, and you'll notice we have three uh, G Whoppers here on stage. Had to have a little scoot across the stage afterwards, you can't. Uh, so let's start this uh, round of questioning, if we may, with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Well, uh, young lady, Gail number three, is there any relationship between the action on one of your G Whoppers and on a surfboard? It's similar. Uh, it's a skimming momentum in this, a minimum amount of water. Yes, I see. Number two, uh, how does it re re relate to a skateboard, for instance, in action, the action? Well, actually, it doesn't relate at all. The momentum is reversed in a, in a skateboard. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Well, a skateboard is similar to skiing, snow skiing. Oh, I thought a skate... Number one, I thought a skateboard was like uh, surfing. It is. Well, is she wrong then, would you say? Peggy Cass. Uh, uh, number three, what is that board made of? It's of marine quality plywood. Thank you. Number two, what is hot dogging? Well, hot dogging is the master of surfing. Thank you. Uh, uh, number one, how much are those boards? Eleven ninety-five. this one. Thank you. Number three, uh, how come that wouldn't sink if I stood on it? I don't see any rudder or any... I mean, you know, here it I am. It would sink if you were in deep water. It would. It just, yes, it it just would. works on skinny water. I mean, shallow water. <laughs> uh, 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 how shallow, number two, how shallow should the water, water be? Mm -hmm. how, I mean, what depth do they work in? Well, usually uh, out where the waves start to break, uh, it, can, it can work in a puddle. But where well, the waves break it. Arson B. Well, young ladies, you certainly have fine, sturdy little bodies for such uh, <laughs> sweet young. How old are you, number three? I'm 20. 20. Number two, are you 20 yet? I'm 20. Number one. 20. All 20. Gee. Uh, number one, uh, what is the... Name me a brand name of one of the polyethylene surfboards that are uh, popular. Uh... I don't know if he makes number them. I can just name you some surfboards. Oh, no, I don't want just any old surfboard. Uh, number two, do you know one of those fine little polyethylene jobs? I don't know the brand name. All right. Uh, number three, what's a famous beach uh, in Australia where a lot of surfing is done? Do you know? No, I'm sorry, I don't. Do you know the famous one in uh, Hawaii? In Hawaii? Makaha. Yeah. What? Makaha. Ah. Uh, number one, can, can, can you uh, belly flop on one of those things? In shallow water, yes. How about if you go out where the breakers are about no, to go? No, they're not made for that. Not with, uh. Kitty Carla. Number two, what is the name of the famous beach near Santa Barbara? The surfing. Number I two? I don't know. Uh, number one, did, well, how much, uh, what was the capitalization of your company? 
$3,000. Number two, who, who was the financial backer? Well, myself, with my father's help. But mainly number th myself. Thank you. Uh, number three, where did you get your experience for this sort of thing? My father had helped me and trained me since I was very young. That's it. Time for now to mark your ballots, if you will, panel. Mark them at once, <clears throat> without consultation and without changing, once you have marked. Voting now, if you will, please, for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three, bud. <laughs> I thought that number three looked like a girl, if her company ever hit the skids, that she'd be able to make something out of it. So I... <laughs> Peggy Cash, which one did you choose? Oh, I chose number one. I don't know why. <laughs> Orson, which one do you think is the real one? It could be any one of them. They're all sweet kids. And uh, I voted for number three because she looks like uh, a surfer type girl. She looks like she could be Jan and Dean's sister or something. <laughs> <laughs> Did it come out? Well, I'm splitting it. I voted for number two. Yeah. <laughs> I thought number two looked like the president of a company. Yeah, she does. Oh, very pretty president, I must say. Well, that leaves it at uh, one for number one, one for number two, and two for number three. Very well, let's find out now. Which one of these young ladies... In truth, is Gail Mansfield. Will the real Gail Mansfield please stand up? Yeah. All right, congratulations to you, young lady. It's quite a thing to be a big executive at, the, at your age and a successful one, too. Thank continued you. success to you. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My real name is Susan Adams and I work for Carmel Myers Incorporated Manufacturers of Men's Colognes. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Camilla Pierce and I'm a ski instructor. Well, in checking the score, we find that there was uh, one, two incorrect votes. That's twice $250 for a total of $500. Buy a few surfboards with that, I'm sure. Or gee whoppers, whichever you want to get. And we thank you very much. Hope you had as good a time as you gave to us. And uh, that you look back upon this as a happy occasion. Good night, and God bless you. Right now, let's take time out for a brief film. Back in a minute. Let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Harold Gribben, United States Air Force. My name is Harold Gribben. My name is Harold Gribben, United States Navy. Follow along again with me, panel, if you will. I, Harold Gribben recently volunteered to spend a month lolling around on a mattress, watching TV, talking on the phone with my girlfriend, throwing darts, and in general, just relaxing. The whole thing wasn't quite as easy as it sounds, however, because the entire room in which four of us lived was spinning around at 10 revolutions per minute. During our 33 days in the room, we underwent various tests. One of the most difficult was simply walking a straight line. The experiment was to study to determine man's need for artificial gravity and his ability to withstand the spin of a space vehicle. The whole project was conducted under the auspices of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Signed, Harold Gribben. These three gentlemen all claim to be, as you heard, Harold Gribben. We'll start the cross-examination with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Uh, thank you, bud. Uh, number one, did you get sick? Yes, I got sick. Yeah, oh. Uh, number three, did you get dizzy? Only at the end. You mean after all that time you got dizzy at the very end of it? Yes. Uh, number two, when you ate your meals, didn't the plates go off the table? No, it was a slower RPM. A slow RPM. What's an RPM? <laughs> uh, 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 number one, did you eat or regular food? You know, like... Well, that was about the worst part of it, but uh, it was regular Air Force chow. I see. Uh, n n well, number three, 
When you went to sleep at night, didn't you sort of get whirly bad? No, we you had no I, I, idea you were moving at all. Oh, no? no. Orson Bean. Number three, let me continue with you. Why did you get sick the last day? We, we had adapted to the spinning environment, and then the sudden stop. Uh, you got sick after you got off, in other words? No, we just dizziness. After you got out? But we had... Uh, I mean, after it stopped? Yes. It's only lasted for so many hours. I see. Uh, and number one, uh, did you have uh, sanitary facilities there? I mean, could you take a shower with the, with the water spritz around the... No, sir. There were, there were no showers. No, nothing there. Huh? <laughs> how long were you in there? Oh, so how many... How long was it, number one? Too long. Oh. <laughs> number two, uh, could you get out of... What if you went stir-crazy and ran amok and slayed two of your companions? <laughs> get it, Carlisle. Number two, I think I read about this somewhere, and it seems to me that the revolutions, the RPMs, were uh, not always equal. Is this true? That's right. They would stop them uh, to give us food. Yeah, that's and... right. That's what I read. Well, then, why is it as number, th number three? You said that when it suddenly stopped, that was the first time it had stopped in a month. Uh, this is after the whole test was complete, and we were ready to finish the test. This was the after all the spinning was done. I see. Uh, number one, when you talked to your girlfriend, did you find any appreciable difference in the type of conversation than if you were <laughs> by yourself just in a bed without moving? <laughs> well, I missed her. <laughs> he had him in a spin. Tom Poston. Thank you, bud. Number two, do you belong to the services? Are you a member of the armed services? No, sir. Anyway. Uh, number three, how come the Navy was involved? I don't know, sir. Let me put it this way. Number one, what were the other members of your group? Their names? No. What, were they also Air Force members or members of no, uh, the we armed had, services? No, sir. We had uh, Navy and Army and Air Force. And? A Marines. A One civilian? Marine. There was four of us all together. All service. That's all we have time for, unfortunately. It is time for you now to mark your ballots. For that, you do have time, and I'll allow it. Just simply mark your ballots at once, without change, without consultation, and vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots are marked. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I thought it was number two. Number three said he didn't know, and I, I understand from the fact sheet that they volunteered, so I thought maybe he'd know a little more about that. And I'm a, I think they must have uh, arranged to keep clean for a month. I can't imagine the services not having that. Peggy so. Cass. Hmm. I voted for number three, because when he said he got sick, he meant it. <laughs> <laughs> Orson B. Well, I voted for number three as well. I, I think that uh, he won me over when he said he didn't know why the Navy was involved. That's a, I was in the Army, and I never knew why anything for a year and a half. Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number two, because number one said that it was bad food. It was Air Force chow, and I don't think he's in the Air Force, and he'd go back and face him if that was the truth. And number three said that he was sick when he got out, and I, d I do believe that they... Uh, change the revolutions every so often for food or whatever. Well, there we have it. It's split up evenly. Two for number two, two for number three. Let's find out now which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is Harold Gribben. Will the real Harold Gribben please stand up? Incidentally, just to set the record straight, Harold Gribben was one of four spinning sailors in the experiment which was performed at the United States Navy's School of Aviation Medicine at Pensacola, Florida. <laughs> what did you mean when you said you didn't know why you were selected? Uh, um, did you volunteer? Well, I volunteered. Well, uh, I believe the question was uh, why the Navy was picked for this. Oh, thing. I see. I see. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Stu Williams, and I'm a scuba diver with the Lloyd Bridges show underwater at the World's Fair. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name, and what do you do, sir? My name is Bake Turner, and I'm a flanker for the New York Jets football team. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Well, we checked the score and find you did equally well as the first round of ninth of a two incorrect. That's twice 250 for a total of $500. Gentlemen, if you to divide, we thank you very much for sharing your evening with us and hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Good night and God bless you. Now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Steve Addis. My name is Steve Addis. My name is Steve Addis. Follow along again with your copy, if you will, panel. I, Steve Addis, am a folk singer. With my partner, Bill Crowfoot, I have just completed a four-month tour of Africa and Southeast Asia under the sponsorship of the U.S. Department of State. Our mission was to show through the international language of music that people are the same the world over. In general, we avoided the large cities and gave our performances in mountain villages, riverbank settlements, and even in field hospitals in Vietnam. During our musical people-to-people -people travels, we collected hundreds of native folk songs and can now sing in 31 different languages. Traveling by jeep, elephant, dugout canoe, water buffalo, bamboo raft, as well as our own two feet, we performed for more than a half million people. Signed, Steve Addis. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Steve Addis. And we'll start with Orson Bean. Orson? Yes, uh, number two, uh, did you ever paddle up the, uh, the rapids of the Zambezi? No, we didn't get that far. All right. Number three, uh, who was Mike Fink. Mike Fink? Mike I Fink. Don't know. Number one, Mike Fink. Don't Number know. two, Mike Fink. I'm sorry, I don't know. American folk hero. Number one, uh, the click click. Uh, what, what language has click click in it? Do you know what I mean? Uh, not exactly. Uh, Miriam, <laughs> Miriam Makiba, number two, sings in a language. Do you know what language it is? Uh, no, because it involves saying the click, and <laughs> I can't do it. All right. Number three, how far did you go by water buffalo? Um, not terribly far. They're very slow. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> number one, Ed, is your partner an Indian? Uh, yes, he is. Yes. Uh, number two, what was the country that had the most interesting folk music? I think Vietnam was. Uh, number three, did you sing only in English? No, we sometimes learned songs in the different languages. And they would, they, in the language of the people you were with? Yes. Uh, number one, what is the department that sent you out in the United States Department of State? The, uh, it was the American, uh, it was the State Department, actually, but it was American Presentation, it was called. Thank you. Number two, do you know uh, who the uh, Freddie March and Florence Eldridge are going out under what aegis that is? It's most likely part of the USIA. The same as you? Yes. Thank you. Tom Poston. Thank you. Number three, uh, what is a capo? Uh, it's something that you put on a guitar to make it play in a higher key. Thank you. Number two, do you know who Alan Arkin is? No, I don't. Do you know number one? No, I don't. Number three, who's Alan Arkin? I believe it's an actor. Well, what relationship does he have to a folk singing, folk uh, music and so forth? Do you, do you know? No. Uh, uh, number two, do you know who Charlie Close is? Charlie Close? No. Do you know not. number one? No. Charlie Close? Do you know Charlie Close, number three? No. Do you know uh, the name number three of the 80-year-old blues singer who is just about to give a concert or just has given a concert in New York? What's that fellow's name? Well, there are a lot of old blues singers. I'm not <laughs> sure which one it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Cass. Thank you. Uh, number three, I like the way you got around. Did you ride on the elephant's back? Yes. You did? And then did your partner have a different elephant or were you both on the one? He had a different elephant. Yeah. He must have made quite a sight. Uh, number one, did you ride on the water buffalo's back? Uh, no, never. Well, it says that you rode by water buffalo. What, how, how did you do it? Well, Traveled. they were, I beg your pardon? Traveled. Tra what? They were involved in the, uh, the means of, of, uh, of carrying the transportation. Oh, I see. They pulled you. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> well, they have various means. I see. It's number two, you sing in all these languages, 31 different languages. When you sing in those languages, do you know what you're saying? Most of the time, no. You just... And that's all the time we have. It is time for you now to mark your ballots. So mark them at once, panel, if you will, for the one who you think is the real one. And uh, vote as you go without consultation for number one.
number two, or number three. They're all balanced, Mark. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. He certainly knew who Alan was, but Alan was uh, a great folk singer, and, and he started a group called the Terriers, which was a, a very exciting group of folk singers, and I thought maybe it was number three because he knew at least Alan. Peggy Cat. I voted for number one because he didn't really explain about the water buffalo, but I could tell that he was really trying hard to tell the truth then, <laughs> even though I didn't get it, but that's not his fault that I'm dumb. So. <laughs> Orson B. Well, I almost voted for number three because he was furtive and sly. But on the other hand, <laughs> number one uh, could be an Indian, and uh, I have no reason to believe that he should be an Indian, but uh, Kitty has if his partner was an Indian, and uh, could be a couple of Indians, you know what I mean? <laughs> Kitty. Well, I voted for number one, partly for that reason, but also because he said he didn't ride on the water buffalo's back, which I don't think people do, but they are used as a means of transportation for pulling carts, etc. So I voted for number one. All right, that makes it three for number one and one for number three. We'll go with that one and find out right now which one of these gentlemen is Steve Addis. And to help us, we're going to call on Steve's partner, Bill Crowfoot. Bill? <laughs> Bill, will you uh, show us which one of these three gentlemen is your partner, Steve Addis? <laughs> Steve, what is that instrument you're holding? This is called a Don Chong, and it's a Vietnamese instrument. Vietnamese? You found it over there, never played it before? That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what they're going to do, uh, Steve and Bill have consented to play for us a Vietnamese folk song, which they recently sang at the White House for President Johnson. So, gentlemen, if you will, the stage is yours. One of the most successful things we could do on the tour was to show an interest in other people's cultures. We did so by including this instrument, on which Steve is playing a Vietnam Vietnamese folk song, Ha Le. Before you get off stage, I want to thank you very much for that fine performance and assisted by and assisting your uh, partner. Yes, Kitty, you have a I question? I can't think of better ambassadors that we could have anywhere here, than here. that. I agree. <laughs> now, number one, you garnered most of the votes. What is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Lionel Cost and I'm an architect. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Keith Martis. I'm an art director with Ashen Engelmore Advertising. Taking the score, you did the best tonight in the job of fooling the panel. There were three incorrect. That's three times $250. Total, of course, you've added already $750. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for being with us tonight. Good night and God bless you. <laughs> very well, panel, take a minute while we look at this brief film. There is something you can do to help build a better world, help people help themselves through the Peace Corps. For information, simply write to Peace Corps, Washington 25, D.C. That's all we have time for tonight. Good night, panel. Good night, night, panel. night. See you next week at the same time, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon, of course, on the daytime show. In the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.
to tell the truth has been brought to you by Tempo, new tobacco blend for more tobacco taste. Now there's a charcoal tip cigarette with good old-fashioned flavor, Tempo. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program pre-recorded.